Hi, I'm Vasha. I'm a third year medical student at Imperial College London and today I'm going to be talking about the quantitative reasoning section of the UK CAT. So please do tune in to these tips and if you do enjoy the tips, please do subscribe. There is a whole series coming out on the UK CAT, so please do uh, subscribe to see more. So tip number one, make sure you check the units at the beginning of any question. So you might think that, oh, I got the answer right and um, my answer is in the options the one that I calculated, therefore my answer must be right. However, do remember that there are five options. So when people are actually, when the examiners are actually designing the UK CAT exam, what they think about is what mistakes students might make. So they will already have calculated the wrong answer when you use the wrong unit. So you might think that, oh, my answer is in the options, therefore it's right. But it should, you should make it a habit to check the unit at the beginning of the question, whether it matches the one in the answer or not. So then you can readjust it. It should become second nature to check the units. You shouldn't even have to think about it. At the beginning of any maths question, do make sure you look at the units. So tip number two, make sure you know your weaknesses. So everybody in maths has different kinds of weaknesses. For some, the speed might be the problem. So they might have no problem in actually reaching to the correct answer. They will be able to get it. But the problem for them is that in the time conditions, they won't be able to reach to that answer. Whereas for other people, the problem is actually arriving to the answer. So if you do already know that you struggle with maths and your problem is arriving to the answer, just make sure what you do is that you start from there. So don't don't immediately just begin to work the questions in really really time pressure so because you won't know how to do the questions in the first place properly so how can you expect those questions to be done correctly even if you do them fast that's why you should make sure you first think about your weaknesses before you actually start to rush into the time pressure of things tip number three do improve your mental maths so what by this what i mean is that i would recommend everybody to start off with one or two days of just mental math practice so um that would be gcse mental maths practice things such as ratios percentages fractions i would find worksheets on google relating to those kinds of things so on google if you just type in gcse maths worksheet for ratios then you'll get um the worksheets and those are very very easy to complete like you'll notice a considerable difference in your speed before and after completing those worksheets and that will mean that you can do the complex questions with ease as well because your speed will already be higher in those sorts of simple basic calculations and that is why i'd recommend downloading worksheets for estimation rounding numbers fractions percentages and ratios so those are like the main topics which I would say you should definitely practice and other things as well which you already know that you're weak at. So for example, if you know you struggle with probability, then I would recommend downloading a tree diagram worksheet as well for that kind of situation because this means that your your foundation in maths is already very, very strong. So in every question you do, your speed will be much greater, hence you will get through more questions and get a higher score. Uh, so tip number four would be that I would create a list of the topics that I would find. So for example, when you're doing practice questions and you see random topics such as probability trees or um, Venn diagrams, that kind of thing, or specific kinds of charts such as uh, bar charts. So I would just write down the topics that I knew I would, I would struggle at. I would create a table. So uh, the good topics versus the bad topics. So in like so if you kind of know a topic, so you kind of know probability tree diagrams, but you don't know them fully or you always get questions wrong, but you know it a little bit, I would still put that topic in, the, in a bad category because you don't really get marks. You don't get partial marks in this exam. You either get the mark or you don't get the mark. So I would try and aim to make as many topics like move into the good category as possible which would mean that i improve my weaknesses and turn them into strengths and that way you can track how much you're good at and how much you're bad at and try to balance those two out or even increase the amount of things you're bad at and make them good it's also possible to subdivide these further so for example with graphs if you find that you're good at certain graphs but you're not good at reading other graphs so if you're amazing at reading bar charts but you're not good at reading venn diagrams or tree diagrams then you know that you're worse at specific subtopics in that topic so you can even write that down and keep a track of your progress in those other things and uh, for the questions that you hate for the topics you hate if you the more you do for those topics you'll identify a pattern for those hard questions as well so you'll get the hang of those eventually and then start 
doing better at those and getting those right as well. That's why writing this list for the topics is very, very useful because it will help you to practice certain things even more than other things and you'll target the areas that are weak for you. Tip number five, I would use the whiteboard to write the intermediate steps. So for example, you know in maths how you have those part B questions, the second question will relate to the first question. So for example, in a two-way table, I would write down the totals for each column and each row on my whiteboard so that for the second and third question I would know that okay yeah I have the answers already and I don't have to recalculate that will save a lot of time for you especially since time is of essence in the UK cap so tip number six is the final tip and um, that is I would master the calculator so you know that the calculator in the UK cat exam is quite hard to use it's not easy it's like it's really fidgety it's hard to use it so the key is even if you are using the text a textbook or anything paper based to revise still use the online calculator you can actually find it on the UK cat website as well so you could just use that um, another thing is that you, there are specific buttons on the cal on the online calculator as well for example M plus would mean that you store this specific number to your calculator so on the calculator you see an M plus button and that M plus button would store a specific number in your calculator and that's useful because if you have to do calculations, multiple calculations with a, a number that has 10 digits for example or loads of decimal points, with a, instead of having to rewrite that number in your calculator so, several times, instead of having to do that you can just hit the MRC button to restore the number that you've stored. So that's a very very useful technique. Also in your school library or in your library in your local area, if you have a keyboard or if you already own a computer with a keyboard that has the number pad on it, the side number pad with, with numbers from 1 to 9. So the, the good thing about that is that in your UK CAT exam you're actually going to have that and the, the reason why that was invented in the first place is because that is much faster in terms of typing numbers. So if you practice with that during your preparation, in your real exam you'll find it very very easy to actually type any kind of number that you want to type and your speed will be much greater than before. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So do try and practice with that number pad if you can. Uh, thank you for watching today's video. Um, another video is coming up on abstract reasoning. So please do subscribe so you can watch that video as well. Um, if you do like the video, please do comment. If you have any feedback, do type it below in the comment section. And if you have any need to contact me or if you want any more tips or advice, please do contact me on my Instagram. It's um, vazmed with a full stop in between. Um, thank you so much for watching today's video. See you in the next video. Bye.